Hey guys, what's up? It's Alexis, Sophie Leather. All right, this video, real quick, we're gonna go over how I glue my uh, backing to my radio strap suspenders, any kind of strap goods, and in general, how I glue my lining or my backing to all my stuff. So, so let me show you what I'm talking about is lining this to this main strap. So we're gonna go ahead and go over the tools needed. So let me change the camera angle and we're gonna get started. All right, so the tools you're gonna need are obviously the glue. You can watch my video on glue that I use. It's in the leather crafting playlist. Some kind of little cobbler's hammer or mallet, something with a flat face like that. You don't need this, but I found it very useful. Um, this little rolling thing, I don't know, what, I don't even know what you call it. But the most important thing to me, in my opinion, is this bone folder or bone file, or, or I think it's a bone folder, I think that's what they call it. This one I got from Amazon, super inexpensive, but this thing is I think the, the most important, uh, and I'll show you here why in a second, all right? Uh, I forgot to mention also uh, polyester webbing, and this is something that I put in between the layers for extra strength durability. This is the, the gross grain polyester webbing. Let's see if I can. Polyester gross grain ribbon. It's a not webbing, but ribbon. It's a thinner piece and it's a polyester gross grain ribbon. You get it on Amazon. This is three quarter inches wide because I'm using a one and a half inch wide strap. And uh, yeah, basically I'll eyeball it and make sure it's in the middle like that. So it adds strength and durability. All right, let's get into the leather. All right, so these are the four layers that I'm going to be gluing, but for all intents and purposes, they're all gonna be the same process. So we're just gonna do one uh, for this instructional video, just so you get the hang of it. But one thing I do wanna to explain to you before you glue is make sure you you stamp and paint your name. You can wait till afterwards, but I found it easier to go ahead and just troubleshoot this. <laughs> stamp it and paint it first, and then we'll go ahead and glue it, and then if we need to touch it up afterwards, then we'll do that. So we're gonna ahead and just do one um, for this and show you the process. The other thing you're gonna need is either, this is cork board, cork board, or you can use uh, cardboard uh, or nothing, but you're gonna have to clean this table afterwards. I like to use a cork board. First thing we're gonna do is measure our ribbon. You don't have to do this. This is a step that I take uh, to strengthen the strap, polyester ribbon. And you know, I don't have to be perfect. It's something like this. And before I do anything, I go ahead and just tack this on. But what I wanna do is make sure that this is nice and flat, right? You don't want it to curl up in the ends like that. It makes it harder when you are actually gluing. So I'm gonna take my glue, make sure you're ventilated and it's, you got some good air mo movement in the room you're doing this in because this is kind of heavy. And you're just gonna put a little, little bit right in the middle. You're just, what you're basically doing, you're just gonna just you're just tacking down this polyester webbing. That's all I do. I put a little bit just like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the strap. And that is tacked on there. And I don't go all the way to the ends, obviously, because I wanna be able to stitch around that. So that's, that is suffice for me. That has a polyester webbing. That's good to go. Now we're gonna grab our backing leather, uh, and I'm using, Wicked and Craig five ounce. Let me go ahead and grab that. All right, so I have my backing leather here and I'm just making sure that what I'm gonna be using is nice and clean. I'm going, this is a flesh side, not the grain side. And I'm finding, I'm locating my spot and this is what I do. I take a regular pen and I mark the leather, right? I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark with a line exactly where this strap is gonna be just right on the leather. Remember, this is the flesh side of the back, the backing leather, not the grain side. Now I know right here that this is the leather I'm gonna use. Now what I like to do is cut this oversize. In other words, hold on. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out 
quite a bit. The strap is a one and a half inches. I would say that probably two to two and a half inches around this is what you'll need. So if you notice, this is exactly uh, what I'm, see this overlap? I like to give myself like a half inch, quarter inch uh, outside of the line. And there's a reason for that. Let me put this away and we'll talk about that. All right, so now we're back here. We have our piece with the polyester webbing in here. Like I say, you don't have to do this. It's something I do for strap goods. Um, and then you have the backing piece that we, that we took out. We have the grain side and then the flesh side that we marked uh, with our strap. Now, I would normally do all of the straps, put all the polyester webbing on the straps, then cut them all out at once. And I would do this at once. I wouldn't just do one at a time like this. I'll get them all cut out, all four pieces, put the, put the polyester ribbon on all four pieces and set them to the side and then cut all these pieces out. And then at that point, then I do one at a time like this. I'll do one strap, glue, one strap, glue, one strap, glue. But let me explain to you the, the next step here. The next step, really simply, you're gonna glue. We're using the contact cement, the weld wood. You can go ahead and look at um, my playlist on YouTube the leather crafting tips playlist, and I go over the, the glue that I use and this glue pot and everything else. Can you see the glue pot? No, you can't. Let me move it over. How about now? All right. So I'm going to glue this first, and then I'm going to glue here. And what I'm going to do is basically I'm gluing all the way out to the edges here, all the way out. And over here, I'm going to glue over this line. This is a problem that a lot of people have. A lot of people like to glue strap for strap and then try to put them together. The problem is, is that you need, you need the glue to go past this line so that you're, you can completely make sure that you're getting contact cement on contact cement. So this is how contact cement works. You need to put uh, cement on one side and then cement on the other side and put those two together. That's how it works. So we're gonna put contact cement here and then we're gonna go overkill contact cement on this. All right, we're gonna go way over the line and this way it gives you wiggle room when you're putting this, this uh, strap on here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we start towards like a couple inches off the, the top first and then I finish the top here because the, the first dip of this brush tends to be kind of heavy. And then now this is just practice on using this brush. Uh, I, I almost kind of go in an angle kind of, I don't know if you could see, or it's almost, almost like a 45. And once I pass an area, I don't go back. That's where you start to mess up. You have to just dabble a little bit and don't go back too far. Just, you know, finish the run. If you gotta go back, then, then uh, you're not doing it right. You know, don't, don't mess around, fart around, and keep going back and forth. Finish your run. Now, this is a part that's crucial, is I go heavy on this part, and I go way over the lines, guys. Look, way over the line, all right? It's more important that the edges are glued more than the middle. So if anything, favor the line and the edges. Same thing on the main strap, the first strap. Same thing on this one. You wanna favor the edges and not the middle. You can technically just glue the edges and not the middle and be fine, if you think about it. You don't want the edges to come undone. So, I ended up talking the whole time. I was gonna do like a fast forward thing, but it is what it is. Okay, so now we're basically done with the gluing process. Now we're gonna talk about how long you have to wait before you put these together. Right now, it's really wet. You don't wanna put them together when they're really, really, really wet. All right, hold on, let me turn the camera, hold on. All right, so you don't wanna put them together when they're super, super wet. You can see here that this thing is soak, soaking, like it's really, really wet. You can almost see it, how it's glistening. You see how it's kind of shiny? You don't want that. You wanna wait until it's dry and tacky. If you wait till it's dry and tacky, then once you put them together, like you want it to be married together and almost immovable. Like once they touch, that's it. That's another reason why I like the overlap and the oversize on this, is that it gives you wiggle room to mess up when you start putting it together. So you want it to be tacky 
and you want it to, when it first makes contact, it doesn't want to budge. So let's turn this back over here and I'll show you. And guys, don't worry about if you get a little bit on the edges here like this. Just brush it off, put it on the cardboard or the cork board, put it on your pants, or when you, when you go to stitch this or finish this off, you can easily just take that off with some sandpaper, the extra glue. All right, so what I like to look for is when it's kind of tacky on both sides, this is still wet. So you want it like almost, you want it to not look wet. You want it to look almost dry and really tacky. A fan will really help. Let me cut that on real quick. All right, that fan is going. And I would say typically, typically maybe like five to 10 minutes for me in this garage. I have the big garage door open. I had the fan going, and you could already start to see that it's starting to dry already. So I'd give it five to 10 minutes, super tacky, and then put it on. This is what it looks like when it's basically ready to go. It's pretty dry. If it all, if it all looks wet like that, then I'd say hold off. But look how tacky it is. That's what you're looking for. That's ready to go. All right, let's put them together. All right, so simply when you put this together, you just start on one end and carefully put it down on the other. So I put the tip right at the tip of that one and I just walk it. I keep this right side up at all times and I'm just trying to put this Bottom one on the line. If the, if the bottom line is good to go, then you know the top is good to go. And remember, you have wiggle room because you glued way over the line and you really want to push down firmly um, on the edges here. Now this is the part that I, that's, is, I keep saying that, but they're all pretty crucial. Let me get rid of this. You don't want to start mashing stuff down yet. I take off any excess glue that's on the top first before I flip it. But this is the part, look, you're gonna flip it now and let's assume that you have a humongous bubble in the middle of this, a huge bubble. I like to just go from the middle out and, and go from the middle and then get that air bubble out. I always, I always assume there's a big air bubble and you wanna go from the middle out, you don't wanna go from one end to the other, right? The middle out, then you wanna take your roller thingy and just hit over it, or you can use your hand, all right? Now, this part right here is super crucial. I want you to see the difference, all right? Let me show you the difference. Hold on. All right, look, there's nothing, there's no crease there. You see? Watch what happens when you, you have to set the edge. And this is what I'm talking about. You have to set the edge with this guy right here. Watch. I don't know if you could see it. You basically wanna ride the edge, find the edge. And this is a part that keeps this stuff together. Same thing over here, you wanna find the edge. And you could see clear as day where that edge is at. And then you finish off, tapping the edges again with this little hammer. You want a well-defined edge. All right, let me show you what that looks like. See that edge there? You want a well-defined edge like that. And with the bone, uh, bone folder, bone file, whatever you call that, that's how you're gonna get that done. That will make sure that that'll secure your edges and it won't come apart. All right, so there you have it. That's how I glue the backing on my straps. Thumbnail time. Yep, just a quick recap. You wanna make sure that you put it on when it's tacky. You wanna make sure that you uh, give yourself plenty of room. You wanna overlap the backing piece and you wanna glue all the way out past the line. You wanna wait till it's tacky, you put it on there and you wanna make sure those edges are secure with this bone folder and that's it. And at this point, you can hand stitch it or machine stitch it. 
I'd wait probably an hour, sometimes longer depending on the glue they're using. I'd wait at least an hour for me personally before I run it through the sewing machine. But I typically glue everything and then I come back to it the next day. That's the safest way. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. God bless you guys. Talk to you later and a mini mustache laser. Bye.